Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on a Civil War Research Trail. In yesterday's episode, I shared a really unique image of a naval officer with a monkey cradled in his lap. Turns out it was a British naval officer. I also learned from one of our viewers that mascots, animal mascots, on board ship's crews on British vessels is a big deal and was written about quite often. So I wanna stick with the theme today, but come back to America and I wanna share this image with you. It's another image that I scanned at the recent Ohio Civil War show. This dog sitting in a chair is fascinating. It's a fascinating story behind it. So to reveal the beginning of that story, let's take a look at what's written on the back of the photograph. You'll see in period pen, a little bit towards the bottom half, says Fox Wallace, 61st OVI, that's Ohio Volunteer Infantry. And then below that, some additional detail, left Columbus with the boys in blue, February 1862, and returned to Circleville, that's in Ohio, with Captain Jacob F. Mater in May 1865. So how crazy is that? We have a documented dog who was a mascot with a Union Infantry Regiment. I cannot tell you how rare it is to have a visual document to illustrate an actual mascot. Another detail I want to point out to you is the photographer's back mark. If you look straight on in the center, you'll see it's Brady's National Photographic Gallery, New York and Washington, D.C. So if you go back to the front, I want to make sure that we have a good look not only at the dog, but also at the chair. If you look at Matthew Brady portraits, from the 1860s in Washington, D.C., you'll see that chair, it pops up quite often. So this is a wonderful visual document from the Civil War period, a mascot, 61st Ohio Infantry, named Fox Wallace. Now, I'll bet you're thinking, you know what would even make this better? Be better if we had an image of the man who was listed on the back, Captain Jacob Mater. Well, here's a surprise. Here he is. Along with the photograph of Fox Wallace came this image of Captain Mater. It's pretty easy to find out information about his life and his military service. In fact, if you go over to find a grave, you'll see a copy print of this image is the portrait of Mater. It also includes a transcription of his obituary. So he lived from 1840 to 1922. He was born in Ohio to German immigrants. And part of his obituary provides details about his Civil War service. So as I read this to you, I want you to think not only about Captain Mater, but I also want you to think about Fox Wallace, because if you recall, Fox Wallace went with the boys in blue off to war in February 1862 and came home with them. So that means that Fox Wallace and Mater and the other comrades in the 61st, they were all together during the camp and campaigns and battles that the 61st participated in. So as I read this short, relatively short obituary, you'll get a sense of just where Captain Mater was and Fox Wallace. So here we go. February 15th, 1862, he enlisted at Circleville. So there's your connection with the inscription on the back of Fox Wallace's photograph. He enlisted in Company, uh, company 61st Ohio Volunteer Infantry and was mustered in as fourth duty sergeant. Was commissioned second lieutenant October 9th 1862, and on October 28, 1863, he was transferred to Company B, 
which he commanded in the absence of its captain until April 29th, 1864, when he was promoted to captain of the company and served as such until he mustered out of service at Goldsboro, North Carolina. On his way home, he stopped at Washington, D.C. This may explain the Brady photographs and was in Ford's Theater on the night of April 14th, 1865, when President Lincoln was assassinated. So it was a crazy thought. I don't know if dogs were allowed in the theater, but is it possible that Fox Wallace and Captain Mater bore witness to the assassination of Lincoln? Don't know. Let me continue with the obituary record. He veteranized, now we're getting back to Captain Mater, he veteranized at, in, in Tennessee in January 1864. He was slightly wounded at the Second Battle of Bull Run and also at Peachtree Creek. He was engaged in the battles of Cedar Mountain, Freeman's Ford, White Sulphur Springs, Waterloo Bridge, Second Bull Run, Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, Hagerstown, Wahatchee, Lookout Mountain, Missionary Ridge, Ringgold, Knoxville, and those of his regiment were in the Atlantic campaign, March to the Sea, Campaign of the Carolinas. He was a member of the Loyal Legion and also of the Hazlitt Post, Grand Army of the Republic at Zanesville, Ohio. So that list of battles and campaigns, Mater was there, and you know Fox Wallace was also there. I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about Mater from his obituary. With the flag of his country for which he fought during the Civil War, shrouding the casket in which he slept, the body was borne to Forest Cemetery Friday afternoon and consigned to earth beside that of his wife and two of his children. Reverend David MacDonald of St. Philip's Episcopal Church officiated. Mr. and Mrs. Carlisle Moffat of Columbus sang, Life at Only Speaks, Reverend MacDonald read the favorite hymn of the deceased, Nearer My God to Thee. So there you have the story of Captain Jacob Mater and his faithful companion and mascot of the 61st Ohio Infantry, Fox Wallace. Until the next episode, take care.